Hello everybody, welcome to another Valheim video. Today I have another interview for you, and this is with Stone Prophet. What's up? How's it going everybody? So yeah, I'd like to start by asking about when when you first started playing Valheim, mm -hmm. can you actually tell us about before that? Like what was your feelings about games? It's interesting because I never really had much of a connection to like the survival open world kind of exploration genre. Uh, I've been playing games since I was really young, so video games have always been present uh, in my life. Uh, and to what I was playing directly before that, it was actually a lot of shooters, um, which I also really enjoy playing just because I like competition and it's fun for me. Uh, but yeah, I, I, um, Valheim kind of was almost like a happy accident. I play with a good friend of mine, and uh, we've done all our playthroughs together. And he just kind of, I think it was right when they were coming into early access, like the very, very beginning. And he's, he keeps up with a lot of this stuff more than I do. And he said, check this game out. It's called Valheim. And I had no, no clue, nothing about it. And again, nobody did. It was very early. Um, but yeah, that's just kind of how we got started. And it was off to the races from there, honestly. Um, it didn't take long for us to start playing regularly, regularly together. Um, but yeah, that was kind of what was, what it was like right beforehand. Um, and just for context, uh, uh, I'm 44. I have a wife, uh, I have three children, two teenagers and one little one. So I have a lot going on in my life, uh, at all times. So that kind of limits my time to participate in gaming stuff. It seems that many people are very lonely, and one of the reasons they play games and do things in Discord is because they they really need to be around others. So when one... I, I understand what you're saying. I don't have kids, but I have a fiancé I care for. And it's very apparent that I, I can't just be in voice chat all the time. I can't just, like, play things. As much as we way. might want to sometimes. Yeah, it's just like... Because then you do that, and you're not approachable by, like, your the person you care about and like you have to keep this in mind if you're in a healthy relationship and you know you need to be accessible to them and if you're just on a computer with headphones all the time i mean it's not there's consequences for that it's not a not a not a healthy thing so i, t I totally understand yeah everything's a give and take for sure uh in life overall yeah um and in terms of just kind of uh what my experience with valheim was like just at the beginning you know obviously Again, it was I, I. I was there kind of at the very, very beginning, um, just playing the game of vanilla, and it would, did not take long for mods to kind of emerge. And I had not had a lot of experience. I think the last game I played with mods was Homeworld Two, which is a real-time strategy game that maybe some people that see this video might know about. But um, yeah, there's like a Star Wars conversion changed all the planes and, and and stuff like that to Star Wars. It was really cool, but I had never done anything with mods. And so I immediately found them really accessible um, and just kind of explored it. And I love to create stuff. And I think that Valheim is more like a creation platform at this point with all the things you can do with it. And, um, you know, not not like you said before. Not many people know that that there's so much you can do, and it's so accessible, um, and it's so easy to learn. You know, and when I say easy to learn, I tried to learn how to mod this game myself, and I I could do it, but I would never want to try really hard because I just don't have the technical know-how. And I'm, you know, I consider myself, yeah, I consider myself pretty pretty adept at learning stuff like that. But I was like, no, I'll just the mods are here. Like the, everything I need is right here. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how that process got started. So, so out of curiosity, the, this friend you mentioned, did they, did they play a lot after that? Oh, yes. Uh, oh, yeah. No, yeah. we, the, the, I was very friend, lucky. Usually the typical Valheimer who's making content or making guides or these mm -hmm. things, there's a period of time where the people they originally started with didn't, they lost interest. They something happened, but if you, you actually had someone else who was interested, that, that's, that's unusual, so that's cool. Well, my friend does not have kids by, by choice, and, uh, and he, has, he gaming is kind of like his only hobby, so he dabbles in a lot of different things, and has, he is, he, I mean, 
thank God for him because if I was if we were keeping at my pace of play, nothing would get done. No resources would get gathered. He does all the legwork. So God bless him. Infamous cow. Shout out. Um, but yeah, the, I, I guess I was kind of lucky in that way. But again, we, we've kind of been me and there's a my other friend Kevin Robinson who's I've I've started playing games with when I was you know yay high. Um, who did not jump on the Valheim bandwagon, which I was sad about, but um, but yeah, I, I am lucky, truly, uh, when it comes to people who I have had consistently. I mean, I've played through the game all the way through to the very end five times, I think. Um, and that's a lot. <laughs> and that's not even counting all the time I spent doing all the other stuff. So I really have been immersed in this game for quite a while. And I think because it's got so much to offer beyond its vanilla layer so why don't we get more into that could you could you share a bit about how the playthroughs you did changed because obviously the first one I'm, I'm sure was pretty pretty vanilla or close to it right so mm -hmm. it must have been quite different by the fifth playthrough i doubt you did things exactly the same or, or oh yeah i mean saying? oh absolutely i mean the 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 uh i don't know what the equation would be to to uh months in 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 the wild in terms of the game versus how many mods you know were created you know it was just it's like a huge you know upward slope there's st people are still making mods people i knew who came to ask who watched the video i made and asked me a question are now the people that are making mods and the people that have been made, making mods for over a year are kind of like eh, i'm just gonna back off so it's like there's this just generational you know short generational lifespan of people that are learning more about the game but um yeah I, the, it, the first one was very vanilla the last one was heavily modded um but it was hand but i you know i'd spent so much time within the community and going through different mods and and i had kind of figured out between the two of us my friend and i what worked for us uh it didn't necessarily work for everybody or you know a lot of people said that's too many mods or that's not enough mods Mods. I mean, you can't please anybody or everybody, um, but yeah, uh, that's it. Was it was very much a full vanilla to like. How much can we cram into this game that makes it more fun without you know it going at twenty frames per second every single day? So yeah. So so are there any particular parts of that experience that come to mind where um, there was something that maybe you thought it didn't really matter that much, but when you changed it, it really felt different. Like, is there anything, because obviously you changed a lot of things, right? Mm -hmm. Is there anything in particular that was like that, that just comes to mind? I think the great things about, that make Valheim special and unique as a game amongst other survival kind of open world games um, is, it's, I mean, it's mods, but it's it's flexibility. Like you, just the couple quality of life mods that make things just a little bit easier. It just makes the whole gameplay experience, all the way through, that much more convenient. So, like quality of life mods, and then the building stuff. I mean, the amount of new pieces that were just basically grabbed off of the internet and shoved into Unity and exported into the game. It, it's like you can make anything you want. Um, so the, to have those two things to both the quality of life stuff to like, make it really easy. And then, you know, you play, we, we played through the entire game and then we, then we built at the very end. So we didn't do any, spend any time building anything we cared about. It's all practical, like big square buildings just to house everything. And then once we got to the end, whatever, you know, season or whatever, uh, point of time we were in the game, uh, whatever the end point was, uh, we would just stop and start building um so i do remember i remember the very first thing we built i mean i made a video four videos about it um but yeah it was that was a lot of fun i remember those things the most there seems to be a theme where uh, people who play valheim really if they don't get into the building they won't keep playing it's very unusual for mm -hmm. someone to do that but also valheim doesn't really make you get into the building if that no. makes sense. Uh, I didn't yeah. realize that until I played... Have you ever played Dragon Quest Builders 2? Mm -hmm. So Dragon Quest, obviously, people... Classic RPG series, right? Sure. 
Um, so that they I at know. some point tried to make a Minecraft clone, right? That was okay. the Dragon Quest Builders one, and then not clone really. I you know what I mean. I I exaggerate mm-hmm. a bit, but they had a story and stuff. I never played the first one, but in the second game, I played it and it shocked me because I had been playing Valheim. But like you mentioned, when before you got to the end, um, the building. I hadn't really done that. I just did the minimal and would like fighting. And I, like, I got into Valheim in the beginning because I had a fist fight with a boar and it killed me. That's honestly the experience that I had. I thought it was just some silly game I'd play for five minutes. And Punching and trees, I, baby. Yeah, it just it shocked <laughs> me into loving the game. And then um, it, it played a, a big role in that sense. So, so it seems that the building aspect is quite, quite important. But if you... Yeah, I was gonna say the aesthetic also, like the 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 pixelated, more like low res, you know, with when the built with the whole building thing, like how is that? It, if you can't get past that, because some people I knew were like, I don't even like the way it looks. Like yeah. I don't care how it plays. I don't like that pixelated look. Like that's like, if you can't get over that, then you're never gonna. Yeah, graphical fidelity. I guess that's called right. <laughs> yeah, sure, graphical fidelity. Yeah. yeah, I've been playing like PS2, DS, Game Boy Color games for the past couple of years. So I, I, I did feel that way for a long time, but I got so bitter about modern gaming that I, mm. I, I associate good graphics as enabling the developer to get away with more. So like mm. when the graphics aren't enough in that sense, fidelity-wise, mm-hmm. they're, they sort of need to do more gameplay elements in a more effective way. It's like in order to capture someone's attention with a 2D sprite, you really have to, things have to be magically placed, right? Whereas if you're yeah. in like a 4K virtual reality world and you've never put on that headset before, I mean, you just walk around in a room. You're right. <laughs> like Everything's amazing. Or exactly. it seems amazing anyway. Yeah. It looks yeah. amazing. But the, the, the thing, the reason I brought up Dragon Quest Builders 2 is because. Prior to that, I was just interested in the combat. But Dragon Quest Builders 2 is made for kids. And it's like, imagine if instead of a survival game, you're in a storyline that's all about inspiring you to build. And that's the Mm. point. Like, literally, the characters are like, don't you worry, everybody's a builder deep inside. It's like... (laughs) It's literally the whole thing is designed to motivate kids. One day you'll be a builder too. No, th- then there'd be someone who's like, no, you already are. Like, it's deep, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you. And after that game, I played it. And don't get me wrong, that game has some huge flaws. Like, they gate the multiplayer until like ha- later in the game. So you can't play okay. multiplayer in the beginning, which is hmm. like ridiculous. But, but as a single player campaign it really is all about inspiring you to get rid of the belief that you can't make something because anybody can just make stuff and Mm -hmm. you just need to make stuff and Mm -hmm. i literally the way i played valheim fundamentally changed after i played that game and it shocked me Mm -hmm. i was like this is what valheim is missing it doesn't Mm -hmm. have that element that because I, I don't get me wrong i love i love on and i think iron gate is amazing and i don't expect them to just do this stuff when i say like this is missing i mean like in my experience i like i find a way to make this part of the game if that makes sense i'm not trying to make right. it seem like iron gate isn't doing something because they've really they've done so much and i mean you paid 20 dollars once for this game if you didn't buy it on sale like that's criminal from my perspective yeah i mean the amount of hours i think many of us have sent in spent with this game makes it you know amazingly worth its value um yeah yeah. so so i'm 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 just mentioning that because of the the building aspect so do you find that making how did making videos about because you didn't start playing were you like making videos in the very beginning or when Uh. when did you Start it's funny that, it. well, it's funny that you brought this up because I, um, I don't think that I made, I can't, I don't remember whether we started playing Grounded first or what it was, because Grounded came out around the same time initially, and we did play both. Uh, shout out to Grounded, all those Grounded players, really great game. 
Um, also, tons of content. Very deep RPG system. Very cartoony. You think it's for kids, but it's really good. Uh, I've never but, heard of that game, so I'll check it out. Grounded? Yeah, Grounded. Yeah, very good game. Uh, but I, I went back to my to my own page, my own YouTube page, to be like, what was what did, what was the first like Valheim video that I put out? And it's like six minutes long, and it's just basically like a montage of like stuff happening in the game, sailing. Like it's it's like literally like not not Trolls even destroying your boat. You know? I, yeah, Classic. like we're just we're just. <laughs> We're just, I'm looking at it right now. We're just playing the game. Oh, there's like the elder fight. You know, I guess that was kind of interesting at the time. But yeah, I, I think I, I love doing um, creative stuff. I have like a very big like bug about, you know, if, I, if only I could just spend all my time, you know, not necessarily making vi these kind of videos, but just like doing this kind of production, like being creative and then having a game like Valheim that allows you to be so creative. You know, yeah. I think it just kind of things just kind of gelled for me with those two things. Like this is the outlet now; I can start making creative stuff again. Um, so yeah, I think I think that was that was the initial inspiration because yeah, some of the first videos I did that were actually kind of edited. You know, it's like base stuff and um, some literally just clips of from streams that were funny, and then I you know made them funnier with editing or whatever and. Yeah, it just you know it created it opened up creativity a little bit for me personally. So yeah, I, I find that doing YouTube videos it, it's like it depends because for for some people they get lost in the like the subscribers and the views and they they feel you can lose yourself in the comments and how critical people can be and all these things. But but at least from what I've observed about making content about things is it brings a lot more meaning to them because you you end up connecting with people and usually most people are suffering because they they don't they don't really have everything they need to be supported uh, they have a lot going on in their personal lives and it's really easy to like watch videos and think everything's great and everything's happy and you're the only one who's going through stuff or sad but I mean maybe mm -hmm. I've just for me personally, most of the people I know in my life aren't aren't doing very well, and mm -hmm. that's it's been like that for most of my life. So maybe that has made me biased. But my interpretation mm -hmm. is that um, for the most part, people are quite lonely. They they're not really able to connect the way they need to. So the moment you start making content about something you care about, especially in the way you described, like you weren't talking about money. You didn't even mention money in that sense. You were talking about creating stuff and having fun in these things and like you've indicated that like it's time and like if you, you want to have the time to do that kind of thing and be able to just do that right and that's like i think a lot of people feel that way because uh yeah people we may live in a world that has technology and these things but that doesn't mean that the the suffering is gone from life and people don't have issues mm -hmm. and things that they have to deal with and unfairness right so I find that yeah. if people make YouTube videos, it helps uh, it helps connect and realize, you know, yeah, you may feel this way, but so does millions of people. And not in a way to demean you, but in a way that you can relate to people and connect. And then really, once you realize that you're part of something and like you're not actually disconnected from things, then mm -hmm. your life gets a lot easier. And YouTube can, I'm not saying it always does, but it can play a really not fundamental always. role in that, in that way. Um, but for yeah. me personally, I find that conversations like this are critical to that aspect. Because when one makes video, but when one doesn't actually reach out to the individual people, it's very mm -hmm. easy to develop this perception of how they all are. But right. I, I just know from experience with YouTube from before that the most meaningful things really have come from those connections. So it makes perfect sense to me that like the things you brought up were related to to that because I, mean, I feel that way as well <laughs> yeah i i i always try to any interaction i have with anyone online uh or anyone in general in life um you know i i assume nothing i i i will assume i make no assumptions i try to be as objective as possible and uh i mean i mean i, I count my blessings every day in terms of where i am in life that i have the time uh, as small as it is to do any of this stuff. And I know that there's a lot of people that don't. Um, 
I mean, it's something that I think about every day. So uh, definitely I'm aware of that. Um, but also, you know, I enjoy helping people. <laughs> like I, 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 I actively in like it makes me feel better to do that. So when I was starting to make videos and learning how to use these mods, I I mean, I knew I was like, I, I don't really this is not going to lead to anything, but at least the information will be out there and it will help some people to to like learn some of the stuff that I just learned because knowledge is power. And, you know, the more we share it, the more everybody benefits. So, um yeah, I, I totally understand what you're saying though. I mean I it's 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 very good to have to put you know, to put a face to someone's, you know, gamer tag or whatever, to to have, you know, some actual conversations, to to meet new people to that are all over the world. I mean, that's one of the great things about the internet. One of the few great things is that it connects people, you know. Um So it sounds like the beginning videos were like you were more just like messing around on YouTube, right? But I, I noticed there. Yeah, I had never done anything like that before, ever. First time, ever on YouTube in terms of like making content that had like a fucking thumbnail. You know, I you know I was tr I was trying a little bit. You know, and it's the first time. So, so s some of your videos though, you very much made a tutorial about something. Yeah, so yeah, very much, very specifically. You, yeah. Can you tell me more about what that process was like? Of like going from just sort of doing that, but then sometimes making videos with more purpose, if that makes sense. Like you really are trying to yeah. educate people about something and help them. For sure. Yeah. Um, I think I think uh, I had spent a lot of time in the community and the in the Valheim modding community very specifically, um, and I was learning things and. Uh, able to, you know, I was, I made my own server. It had a bunch of mods and I had handpicked them. And this was again, all very early. So things were still a little bit wonky. Um, but, uh, people were asking questions and they were not getting enough answers, not necessarily of me, but within the community. Um, and this is, you know, again, to the gracious and, uh, generous people who make the mods, who spend all of their free time with no, you know, there's no, uh, uh, they're not doing it for money. They're doing it because they enjoy doing it, just like we all enjoy doing other things. But they are the ones that make the things that we get to play with. Yeah. So uh, I always try to remind people, like, you know, this is free content you're getting from the community. Let's not, you know, uh, get too upset about not getting an answer. But I think that happened enough times where I was like, well, nobody's making videos about this stuff. Or if they they do, I would go and watch them, and I'd be like, this is not good. Like this is not what people need. This is not the yeah, right information. It wasn't all that content. Yeah, and it there's it wasn't all that way. Um, but I was like, you know what? I I had already started kind of like making videos to a certain extent, and I was like, I can like, I know how to do this. Let me try and do this. And once I did, and you know, I could see that people were watching it, not because I was like, oh, let me get the views. I was like, oh, like people are actually watching it, and they would you know, comment on it and ask a question or, you know, say something stupid. I mean, it's the internet, but yeah. um, I knew people were watching it and I knew it, was, I knew it was helping people at least. And I was like, at least it's doing its job. And so I took that and I ran with it. I was like, okay, well, what else do I know how to do? And then I just started making more videos about all the, th all the little things that I, you know, I would do a YouTube search. I'd say, look for exactly what I was going to make the video about and find the videos that had anything to do with those and watch them all and be like, here's how we can combine all these videos together and make them into one short video that will, you know, give everybody the information they need in a short, like, at least I hope it was short video. Um, and, and it seemed to work. So I, I just continued doing it because I, I, I didn't dislike doing it, but I think it got to a point at the end where I was like, I can't keep up with the amount of mods. Like there's too many mods, there's too many updates. Like I'd make a video, and then two months later, like some of the, I, there's like content that was included that's not included in my video, and people be asking me questions. So it's a little bit of a double-edged sword, especially when you put yourself out there, um, as I'm sure you know. But um, I, I I just really enjoyed editing the videos, getting the information out there, getting it right giving practical examples, showing people how to do like the little, the little, 
nitty gritty stuff that maybe wasn't getting shown in other videos, you know, and, um, and yeah, to this, to this day, I still get comments like from people that have just watched the video, like, you know, from a year ago that are like, Hey, how do you do this? You know, <laughs> you didn't explain it in the video. And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, I, you're right. I didn't explain that in the video and here's how to do it. You know? And uh, to your point earlier about connecting with people, like I try to respond to every single comment and I don't do that because I'm looking to like necessarily have like i need an interaction but i want people to know that it's not just like this empty shell of a video that has nothing behind it like there's still somebody that knows is paying attention you know and i think that a lot of people like when they get responded to and ask a question in youtube i mean i have even had people say that like i you know you're the first person that actually responded to me and i'm like that's a bummer, but I'm glad that somebody did, you know? Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of like how the, how the experience went for me. I think the, the that's one of the ways that it was harder to access information back then because things have changed a lot, especially I'd say over the past year in regards to accessing information. Um, cause I, I guess the, I don't know when the Valheim world editing server on discord started and i'm sure that there's a lot of other servers that are like that and very useful right um, mm -hmm. but it seems that like that there's there's certain features for example that most of what you're describing is from sort of the era in valheim that i view as the the, the non-vanilla modding era where like you couldn't mm -hmm. really mod things without having the client install something does that make sense? Like that you, you could do a little yeah. bit nowhere near the amount of stuff that can be done now. Like especially mm -hmm. with things like uh, expand world prefabs and mods, server side mods like this, you can yeah. make versions of most of, not most of, but you know a good portion of the mods that used to be just client stuff. And mm -hmm. in a lot of other ways, the the access to this has been opened up. So. That's a wonderful thing, definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and again, those are people. Um, you know, I've taught them a lot in a lot of times in in voice chat or just in in conversation on Discord. You know, they're just it's just one or two guys that just they don't even play the game anymore. You know what I mean? They just they'll just update their mods. They'll put out like Yeri Kusla. Um, I can't remember where he's from. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he, he truly is the one that kind of unlocked the keys to the castle um, when it comes to all like the under the hood console stuff that made a lot of what I think a lot of people have done possible. Um, and may, a lot of people might not even know who he is or care, um, but he and like a few other people just like once they once they figured it out and they shared everybody shared it with everybody and they wrote down the commands like that was the huge thing like you know having this documentation i mean the documentation was the key to making a lot of my videos i would go through i would sit there with the document open and just go through here's how you do this thing and just show it you know yeah, and once yeah. that once because nobody was doing it um so yeah they 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 really they really um they really made us so much possible and there's still so much possible that you know like you said you can make a game within the game without the client having to download anything at this point um and that's great and that's that's progress and that's i think why this game will probably have a really long tail they may never update the game after they finish whatever you know the north or whatever they're going to do um but this stuff will just be here you know and you there's ways to go back versions in the game you can you know, if things were ever to go out of date, there's you can still make things work, um, and that's impressive for a game like long, yeah, that's long. Very yeah, the, to be that flexible, it's really, it's unique in the gaming world, and I don't think enough people know how unique it is. They just see, oh, this game's got a lot of mods. You know, like, well, there's a reason, and you know, it's special. So, yeah, Valheim is is absolutely very special. So, so. so I can ask you a couple more things. And by the way, if you need if you need to leave or anything, just you can you I'm can good. extend it whenever you want. I'll pretty much just keep asking you questions until you feel like. <laughs> so I want to learn a bit more about um, 
you mentioned that you've been playing some other games. What other games after the sort of because I'm I'm imagining that the you're playing Valheim a lot and then interest always wanes at some point and one moves on to other things, right? So what what other things have you have you played that you found were satisfying? Uh, I think I'm actually going back and playing a little bit more of it now. They just updated it and shrouded. I really liked that. Um, but even just for the the Valheim like progress chart and my for for me personally, you know, it did start kind of like with you know playing vanilla and then going through and then discovering mods, playing through. So there's been this kind of like peaks and valleys. And even in the valleys, I was doing these videos. So I was always kind of like Valheim was always there. Um, but like stuff like Enshrouded, I mean, I've been playing Battlefield, the Battlefield franchise, the shooter, the shooter game um, since its inception. So that's always been kind of like this go to. I just need to chill out and zone out and just play that game for 40 minutes. Um, yeah, uh, just I, I don't think there's been much Rocket League. Um, other sh some other shooter games. Uh, I you know I have a uh, almost twenty year old son, and who is also plays video games. So I try to you know find things to do with him every once in a while if I can. Um, but yeah, I, to your point, not much, not much aside from from Valheim and those other things that I just mentioned. Yeah, it seems we we live in a time where a lot of games are. Uh, maybe you have any, some theories on this. Do you, so do you feel that? Um, Okay, there's a lot more games now, right? Like every year, I mean, maybe I'm exaggerating, but I, I feel confident saying there's more than a thousand new games released every year. If you look at I would, yeah, yeah, it, it could be way more than that for sure, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you're talking about indie games and everything, you know, way more, right? So yeah. it, maybe I'm bitter, but it, like I, I don't feel as excited about anything anymore that's new. Um, I play like DS games and PS2 games and like uh, old PC games and I find that there's more good games that I haven't played that were already made and like things like Elder Scrolls Daggerfall which used to be really hard to get into but people have remade it in Unity and just like fixed things up right and you can play like Pokemon games that they like remade them not remade them, but like made it so, okay, you don't have to trade to other people to get all the Pokemon. There's a way to get every Pokemon. And like communities sure. have just poured their hearts into all of these things. And it's just shocking to me how, it's like how horrible most games are. But I don't know why I'm shocked because that like peaks and valleys, like you said, I mean, in the 80s, the game market crashed or 90s, it crashed completely. You could argue it crashed in other periods. So, and th that's why it crashed, right? Because games were so shitty so often that people completely lost faith in the scene. So I I'm wondering, like, first off, does that sound agreeable at all? Or do you feel like there's lots of good games? Maybe it's just harder to find them. How do you feel about that? I think that just like we're oversaturated with information and the access to information we're oversaturated with with games and the there's i almost view it like uh roots in a from a plant that have just kind of like spread out so much that it's hard you know there's something for everyone but even finding that something for you is hard to hard to nail down for sure um i i do probably think that the quality quality because of that's subjective um, oh, in in some sense, uh, of games has probably dwindled a bit. Um, but I think it's games like Valheim, like some of these Pokemon, like any any game that has a strong community behind it and people that care about it, it will endure. Like it will endure. Um, and uh, you know, twenty years from now, I could be you know playing a Valheim port. You know what I mean? When I'm yeah. sitting on my couch, you know what I mean? Like it, the games where, and it's, they're made by people 
and people work hard and they put their heart and soul into them. I, I do believe that. I know even if it, they turn out shitty in some way, you know, people did work hard on them in some way. Um, yeah. When they're good and they have a good community, it's just it's like a it's like this very special, unique thing where they're like immortal almost. And you can kind of always go back to them in some way. Um, and, and it's hard to be one of those games. I think it's really hard. Um, you know, not of a thousand, if there's a thousand games released, maybe zero of them would ever be one of those games. Um, so yeah, to your point, I think there's a lot of shitty games. Um, and there's just a lot of games anyway. So I think for the average person who's kind of, you know, dipping their toes into the gaming community and maybe doesn't have as much of the, uh, oh, I know to check these couple review sites and, oh, I know to watch these couple YouTubers because they've, you know, I trust their gameplay and, you know, they'll give me the information. You know, if you're just kind of like on your own, like a, you know, 55-year-old mom in a Walmart wondering what to buy their kid for his birthday or her birthday, like, you might not know where to turn and that's hard uh and because you might want to play something so you just don't know what <laughs> you know <laughs> so yeah, yeah i had been feeling that way and i thought that's what valheim was just another sort of game like i don't know why but i played rust and i just wasn't able to it, it seemed very interesting and i'm not saying it's a bad mm -hmm. game at all but i think the like toxicity of the experience sort of was off-putting for me probably um mm -hmm. at least not playing with like a friend or something just playing with random people but mm -hmm. aside from that I, it's not like i had some experience it's just almost like games are too flashy too like it's like i i need them to start simple and become complex and that's mm. what i like about valheim it does that but a lot of games, they start so complex and they've got all these UI elements all over the screen and everything and they're using all these borrowed archetypes from all these other games that you have to know that that's how you play because you play those other games and they don't teach mm -hmm. you properly. And it's like, yeah, it's like as someone, I asked this question recently in the Discord and they were like, well, it's just like the, basically because games are owned by boards of directors now. <laughs> And like that's the well, it's, <laughs> it's the entertainment industry, I think, as a whole, both cin cinema talk like cinema and and video games, I think, have fallen under the same spell of like you just said, it's no longer in the creative's hands. It's in the corporation's hands. And it's hard to overcome that when they know what sells and what sells is flashy stuff and not everybody wants flashy stuff. And so for those of us who are not looking for the flashy stuff experience, then it's harder for us to find the things that we want, you know, because everything yeah. is kind of like a little bit more yeah, oversaturated like with this kind of things are flashy, but not it has to like basically everything's so flashy that when I see something flashy, I don't give a shit. Like, really, I don't. I don't care unless like it's simple first, you know, mm -hmm. you have to get the simple stuff and then you see the flashy thing and you're like, ooh, right. I remember when I played mm -hmm. World of Warcraft as a kid, I remember seeing a sword that had fiery. And I was like, oh God, that, what? I, it blew my mind. And I spent like ages just with that concept and wanting a flamey weapon sword. And I don't think I even got enough money to get one, but it, it was awesome and I loved it. And mm -hmm. like now looking back, that seems silly, right? But I see that, that that's because I hadn't been exposed to all of this flashiness. I hadn't been exposed to all of this ridiculousness. So now it's almost like the more contrasting thing is to be simple. You know, it's like the more this happens, the more it pressures, it like, it like grooms people to be ready for something mm -hmm. different, right? Yeah. Well, maybe I'm just being yep. blindly optimistic, but. <laughs> it certainly is a, it's almost like a lost art, I think, in a lot of ways to, that is, or certainly, certainly something that is not as, as, highly um it's it's not put up on the highest pedestal in terms of what quote unquote people want to see with their entertainment or their video games but you know you're never going to please everybody there are still people making games like that and people do find them uh i think it's just a matter of you know people people like us and people and in, in communities it's like helping people directing them be like hey 
go check this out or go look at this thing or go, you know, this game's really good, you know, and it, as long as there's as long as there's communication, people will find what they need. Um, so it might not just take longer, unfortunately, because of all the bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's been quite a... And I, I don't want to be misleading because, like, there's more indie games and the individual's ability to develop a game now and put it to market is, like, completely doable. Whereas before, like, you look at something like the Nintendo 64, I mean, you, you've got a couple hundred games on it. Mm. Like, it's like, uh, it's not that much, you know? It's really a... a, a Compared to what, what's available on, on even consoles, computers these days, I mean, there's times where that many games show up on Steam in hours, you know? It's like, uh, we live in a different era. So I don't mean Very to be different. misleading in the sense that, like, I know that there are incredible games being made, but the problem is, like, I have to spend so much time being misled to find them, mm. that I don't view it as worth it when I can just play the games I haven't played that have a community that have been fine tuning the experience and making this like, it's crazy what just a couple changes to a game can make. Like it's not even taking it to something else. It's like making it more of itself, you know? And again, I think that's, that's almost subjective because people have thought that way a lot about Valheim and, you know, there's a lot of hardliners I think still out there that are vanilla only anything else is heresy. Um, and then they're probably not uh, you know, anymore, though. I, I mean, it, does, it doesn't even matter. I, yeah, <laughs> I, it, honestly, I think that that the beauty of things like mods and games is that, especially when there's support or you know the ability to allow mods, is that when there's a game like Valheim or like anything else that has you know things features missing that maybe a lot of people wish were there, but the developers are like no this is how we want the game and that's their choice because they made the fucking game who are we to to argue but then allow us to make the tools to do it the way we want to do it without breaking things and that's what they did yeah. um even just even just like the little things like craft from containers come on guys why is that not a vanilla feature yeah, I love I'm that. serious. So much. I can't play with like, it anymore. <laughs> I just, you know, the little things like that that do enhance the experience for the entire run of the game, you know. And if suddenly somebody flipped a switch and that was gone, people would be like, "What the fuck? I got, you know, I gotta have everything in my, you know." It's just, it's great to have a a community that cares and be a community that can make things like that and that the the game will allow them because not every game will do that for sure yeah uh, so you have to wait for resistance. decades or you know whatever for somebody to patch it make things like uh, yeah it, it to, to be under the the will at the will of the development team and ultimately the boardroom who decide how much money the game after its release you may be one you know these features might never come you know, you, get, you might be sitting, and meanwhile, there's game B, who has a strong community who's modded the game to the point where, like you said, it's perfect for, like, 80% of the community. So, it just, it's, it's, it's hard, you know. We got lucky with Valheim. Like I keep saying, it's, it's special. I, I heard recently that it, it takes 20 years for the community to perfect a game. <laughs> I, I, I would like, believe oh. that I would and I would say that it's even it's probably, you know, getting shorter as technology technology advances, you know, it might have been 10 years, five years ago, and maybe now it's five years or maybe now it's 10 years or whatever. Um, but yeah, I think that it does take a while. Even that is subjective because, uh, you know, I it, it every to each their own, you know, so what a perfect idea of a game to me might not be the same to you. So um but it's nice to have, again, that flexibility that Valheim offers. Is there anything that comes to mind that you'd like to cover or ask? Or... Um, I think that people, it's, it would be really great for people to know uh, what you can do with Valheim and how flexible it is and that it really truly is like a sandbox uh, with the tools that the community has made 
and that there's you know I, I have I still have ideas that I wish that I could implement that I know if I just worked with a couple modders for like a month, I could probably make happen in some way, but you know, I don't have the time or the money to, to waste on that, unfortunately. So the, the game offers so much, um, in so many different ways, uh, that, you know, if, if anyone watching this has ever been on the fence about whether or not they would ever want to play Valheim, which I don't know why they would at this point, but you should definitely give it a shot. Cause I think it's one of the greatest games in the last 20 years. For sure, in its in its genre. Yeah, yeah, I I, I strongly agree. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's shocked me that uh, it's hard to even find the words for it. But it's so like, you know, when you find something and you didn't even know that you needed that. You know, it's like, and for mm -hmm. me personally. I, I wasn't, I never really felt like, okay, I've, I've made loads of videos. I've published like 1,700 videos on YouTube, like loads. I just bled videos for years and years and years. I didn't give a shit. I just made videos to deal with life, right? And even even then, the I didn't really feel like I could create things, really. I, I felt like I could create mm -hmm. a video, but I didn't feel like I could like, draw or paint or build something or design something but Valheim it created this space that built this these habits of creation in me and they just like I don't know how to explain it but I, I would play Valheim and then I when I was building stuff not so much when I was fighting and doing stuff but when I was building stuff and I would like get this momentum and then if I put the game down I would like go and do stuff in the yard and garden and, and it, it literally just poof and all I had to do is get creative in Valheim and then shut the computer and I would just make things and plant and study permaculture and it it activated in me this spark this um, this creativity that I didn't experience before Valheim mm. I really just didn't experience that and it it's like it was around that time I played Dragon Quest Builders 2 that like it enabled me to see uh, like everybody is creative everybody can make things it really is just this that stops us and we think mm -hmm. we need to be something or do something but aside from that it's like you said people just don't have the time but they really want to yeah you know yeah and most people are happier when they're making stuff and like connecting with other people and doing all that and i think that's kind of you know that's how we're supposed to be <laughs> it's true and you know i mean the internet and video games are what they are, but certainly the the connection point I think is important. I think it's the, the one thing that makes gives them continued value for humanity, uh, because you know it is a way for you know anyone with the the means, and you don't need a lot of means anymore just to play a video game in some regard or talk online with someone uh, that you know, brings people together and, and lets people be creative. It doesn't always have to be about shooting and blowing things up. Um, you know, the creative aspects of some of these games, I think, I mean, look at some of the amazing things people have built in Valheim and in other games that have any sort of building aspect. I mean, that's that's creativity. That's like almost like art, I would say, to a certain degree. Yeah, it is. Um, I fully yeah, believe and, it's art. It's just another yeah. form of it. Yeah, exactly. And just like video games, I think, are art in another form. Um, and so when you have something thing like that that can offer a community uh, in a way to communicate and, you know, creative flexibility, it's, it's like I said, repeating myself, but very special. And um, other games have done this, and they've, they've done this well um, in their own way. Uh, but yeah, video games are great, man. They, they, they I think they help people, <laughs> you know, more than they Certainly hurt people. Can. Yeah, I, I'd say that as well. I mean, my, my father died when I was a child. Uh, I was 11, and he died of lung Sorry cancer. That. That's okay. It was a, one of the reasons I believe what I do about the world is even though my father's dead, he was so loving to me and so encouraging that I have a, a more healthy relationship with a dead man than most of the people I know do with their living fathers. Mm -hmm. And I see, that's why I say that... Um, people don't really have what they need because really life is quite a happy experience. 
the problem is that we have to live in this way that makes it so miserable. And mm. my father may have died, but he gave me what very few other people got. And I'm able to be happy. Even though he's dead, he's not gone. He's with very much mm -hmm. with me. So yeah, for I, sure. I just say that. You don't need to apologize. Don't worry. I didn't, I didn't mention <laughs> that for, for, for that reason. Uh, but the reason I bring it up, and, and I'll, I'll end the call soon, don't worry, I won't keep going on, is that that period of time in my life is why I'm so into video games. Because mm. when, when he died, I, I was essentially alone. My, my mom had to work all the time, and we didn't really have any other family interactions. Uh, my mm -hmm. family is very much all workaholics, so they're very absent even though they're very good people, very genuine, they care very deeply. Sure. And they would do everything they could, but they're not there. And, you know, how could they be, right? It's very complicated. But what I'm mm -hmm. getting at is if it wasn't for games, I mean, for me, that was like, I remember that's why I played World of Warcraft so much. That's why I played RuneScape and MMOs, because I didn't have connections in my life. But I could, like, back then as a kid... I could just play a game and connect with the random people and actually innocently experience it, you know? There was this magic to it. And I agree that, at least in my case, games played a very beneficial role in my life and throughout that grieving process. And being able to just be okay, like, without having much, you know? It's like you can... You can do so much and do so many things in games and have so many experiences. So I, I completely agree that they can be very positive. But I, I, I'm hesitant to say that there's more positivity than good just because we, we live in an era where we're, we're teaching children gambling. We're, we're doing very... Um, well, there is that aspect of it, games. yeah. And, and I, that's just one part of it, you know? And I, I'm not someone who thinks that, like, uh, violence makes kids horribly violent. I, I'm not saying that i'm just saying that if you look at the game we're we're going more and more and more and more in directions of abusing the players and taking from them and abusing mm. them and tricking them right and if you just for me that's why i i'm hesitant to just say you know games are better off than not but obviously with the personal experiences i've had i see how games are the potential to give people the support they don't have and that is that's a better way to say it you know that is incredible <laughs> yeah but, very true and very right, true every, everybody so uh, i will end the video I'll, I'll just we can close after after i finish the recording but mm -hmm. if you're if you're watching this and you want youtube to show you more videos about valheim then all you have to do is like this video or any other video about valheim and that'll tell youtube to give you more valheim related content and there's a lot of really cool Valheim videos, especially if you like building or learning about this sort of stuff. Um, there's plenty of people who've made content, and I encourage you to check out Stone Prophet's channel. And I'll put a video, whatever you pick, I'll put it on the end screen. So that'll show up. And if you want to watch that, you can see some more of his content. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you next time. See ya. <laughs>